Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Rebecca Smeckla. I'm here from the Department of Educational Technology in Palm Beach County. I'm here to introduce our uh, special speaker today from Loggerhead. But before we get started, just want to point out a couple of things. Um, we would love to hear any types of questions that you have for Lindsay from Loggerhead. There's a chat box right over here. Feel free to type in your questions. Um, as always, this chat is recorded, so keep it um, specific to our presentation today. So I want to go ahead and bring up Lindsay and introduce her. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay's from the Loggerhead Marine Life Center, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she does there at the facility, and then we're going to dive right into this virtual experience. Awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay. I am the STEM Education Coordinator here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center. We are a sea turtle hospital and research facility located in Juneau Beach, Florida. So right on the Atlantic coast of Florida. Wow. Well, you guys are in for a treat today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to Lindsay and let's get started. Thanks, Rebecca. Awesome. So I'm going to start you guys off with a little bit about our rescue to release process here at the hospital. And to do that, I'm going to flip the camera around and show our little diorama here before we go see some real sea turtles, which I know is why all of you are actually watching today. <laughs> so the first step on our rescue to release is the rescue, right? So how do we rescue our sea turtles? Well, normally we get a call from people just like you, the public. Um, who will give us a call and say that they either found a, a stranded sea turtle um, or, um, oh, sorry guys, or uh, we'll get local authorities call it into us and say that they found a stranded sea tur turtle or a turtle that's not acting like a normal sea turtle. Sometimes our sea turtles, when they are sick or injured, they'll float up at the surface, which is not normal for a sea turtle. Um, and what we do is we have a rehab team that goes out and actually rescues that sea turtle. So you can see in this image that some of our rescue members out there picking up a pretty large loggerhead sea turtle. We will go rescue the sea turtle, whether it's in water, on land. Sometimes we've had to jump off of piers. We've had to take boats and jet skis. No matter where they are, we will go find that sea turtle. And yes, we do have a sea turtle ambulance. Uh, if you've been to our facility, it's normally parked out front. It looks just like a human ambulance. Uh, and we use it to go pick up our sea turtles. The next thing we do is just like if you're sick and you go to the doctor's office, we do an exam on our sea turtles. We don't know what's wrong with them when they first come in. So we do an ex external exam. We look at the outside of their body. We wanna see if there's anything we can see with our eyes. Are they entangled in something? Maybe they have a large wound. Maybe they were hit by a boat or bit by a shark. Those are some of the injuries that we do see in our hospital that we'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit. But sometimes we can't see what's wrong with them. So we always do a blood test. Maybe some of you had had your blood pulled at the doctors before. This allows us to see what sort of internal infections are going on in our sea turtle. Something that we can't see with our eyes, but uh, there could be some infections going on. And of course we do an x-ray. I'm sure at least a few of you, unfortunately watching, have had to get x-rays done before. Maybe you've broken a bone, fallen off your bike, and had to get a little bit of a closer look at your bones. So on a sea turtle, when we do an x-ray, we can not only see their bones, but we can see um, into their body cavity, we can see if they ate something that's maybe causing a blockage. Uh, plastic, we see fishing hooks and fishing line all the time. And that sort of stuff will actually show up on the x-ray. Next up, once we do all of our tests, we can diagnose our sea turtle. We can figure out what is the leading cause of its illness or its injury, and then we treat it. So the treatment plan is uh, just like when you guys go to the doctors, we have medications that we give our sea turtles. We have different treatments that they require. We even do laser treatment. Maybe some of your parents have had laser treatment done before on their joints. Uh, we do the same thing on our sea turtles. And last is our favorite step, it's the release. 
our goal is to release every single sea turtle patient that comes into our hospital. We see on average about 100 patients every year and the majority of them are released. If for whatever reason they can't be released, maybe they are um, too injured, they can't survive out there in the wild, we can partner with an aquarium like SeaWorld or the Georgia Aquarium is who we've partnered with in the past to give them some of our sea turtles a permanent home. All right, now for the main event, of course, we're gonna go out to our outdoor hospital. We do have an indoor hospital as well that I'll show you in a little bit. But our outdoor hospital is where our patients spend most of their time here. So each of these tanks is considered kind of like a hospital bed or their hospital room. We keep them separated. And I'm gonna go with this one first. Brody looks like he wants to be talked about this morning. <laughs> this is Brody. He's loving that window right now. Brody is one of the largest patients that we have in our hospital right now. We have about 20 patients in our hospital currently. And Brody is an adult male loggerhead sea turtle. So there are seven species of sea turtles that live around the world. And here in Florida, we actually see five of those seven. So we can see all five of them at a time in our hospital. Right now we have three different species, so I'll be sure to show you each of the three so you can see the differences in them. But this one right here, the loggerhead, is the most common one that we see down here in South Florida. The reason why we are named after the loggerhead is because we see so many of them. They're also the number one species that nests on our beach here in Juneau Beach. We have three species of sea turtles out of those seven that nest on our beaches. They are this one, the loggerhead, the green sea turtle, and then the biggest sea turtle, the leatherback sea turtle. Now Brody has kind of an interesting story. When Brody first came in, Brody had eaten monofilament, which is that fishing line. Unfortunately, we do see a lot of fisheries interactions is what we call it with these sea turtles. Luckily for Brody, Brody had eaten a, a large amount, a, a few feet actually, of fishing line, but Brody was able to pass it naturally through the body. A lot of times that doesn't happen. A lot of times we actually have to go in surgically and try to remove a lot of that fishing line. And when Brody came in, Brody was floating at the surface of the water. That's how uh, the rescuers located Brody. Because of that fishing line in Brody's stomach, it was causing air to get trapped in the digestive system, which was causing Brody to float. But you can see right now, because Brody passed that fishing line, Brody's not floating anymore. Brody can act like a normal sea turtle at the bottom of the tank, hang out by the window. He's clearly hungry. They have not gotten their breakfast yet this morning. <laughs> and Brody is over 200 pounds. So you can kind of estimate how big Brody is. Now, Brody is an adult male sea turtle. And how do we know that? How do we tell between male and female sea turtles? Well, we don't know until they are adults, until they are this size, actually. When they're smaller, we can't tell. But I want you to look, do you see a big tail that Brody has back there? Let's go up top and see if we can see it a little bit better. See that big tail hanging out in the back? When sea turtles are adults, the males will have a very long, large tail and the females will have a very short tail and that's how we can tell. All right, Brody, thanks for being awesome. We're gonna move on to another patient now. Hey, Lindsay, while you're walking, can you yeah. answer a couple of questions? Of course. Um, I'm not sure, are you able to see questions on the screen? Do you see it on your screen now or no? Yeah, let's see. Well, I've okay. got the live comments up. Is it in the comments? No, room? it should be like okay. right on the screen. I have Daniela's comment up. Yeah, awesome. Does Brody eat a lot? Yes, he does. You can imagine a big sea turtle like that. Let's go back to Brody. You really got to get the size. <laughs> <laughs> Brody eats quite a bit of food here. We want to make sure that our sea turtles are very healthy. Out in the wild, a sea turtle like this, a loggerhead, actually eats crustaceans mainly. That's why they have that big, strong jaw, that large head. 
so crustaceans like the conch shell, lobster, crab, they have a very fancy seafood diet out there in the wild. But here in the hospital, we feed them uh, food that is really high in protein. So uh, kind of like if you're sick, your parents probably want to give you a lot of protein, make you feel better. So we give them here in the hospital squid and a couple different uh, species of fish is what we feed them. And yes, Brody eats quite a bit. They all have a, a certain measurement of food that they get. Again, we don't want to overfeed them or underfeed them. <laughs> Great question. And just right. two more. Yeah, if, you, if a sea turtle, if they see one on the beach or anywhere that doesn't look right, should they call you guys? Should they try to help it? Should they take it home? What should um, they do if they see a turtle and that needs help? Great question. Thanks, Michaela. So if you see a sea turtle that you think needs help, it is a great idea to call us, but maybe you're not located near us. What you can do is call any sort of local authority. So you, you can just call the police. They'll know who to call. But uh, normally in Florida, you would call Florida Fish and Wildlife. That's sort of our wildlife police here in Florida. But elsewhere in the world, if maybe you're not located in Florida, uh, there are local authorities that you can call and they'll know who to call. Normally there is a sea turtle rescue team somewhere in the area. Awesome, thanks so much. Keep going, this is awesome. There's so many great questions in the chat. Awesome, great, keep the questions coming guys. We're gonna move on to, let's see. Let's go to Bunny. Bunny is a little bit harder to see than Brody. Bunny doesn't want to be too social this morning. But Bunny is also a loggerhead sea turtle, but much smaller. Bunny is a juvenile, so Brody was an adult. And Bunny is uh, closer to about 50 pounds, so much, much smaller than Brody. Bunny came in for an injury that we see quite a bit in our hospital. It's called a boat strike injury. Uh, here in South Florida, we do have a lot of boat traffic out there on the water. And our sea turtles have lungs. They have to come up to the surface in order to breathe, which really puts them at close contact to some human activities like boats. And if you look, let me see if I can kind of point it out. If you look up here on the shell or the back, the carapace is what we call it. It's that back shell of Bunny. You'll see up top, there's a, a couple little black spots. So there's actually a really big cut in that carapace from the boat strike, from that propeller. And we have a little contraption on the back of Bunny right now, sort of holding that shell together. Now the shell won't grow back, but it will fill in with scar tissue. So that little contraption is helping sort of fuse the different pieces together as they heal. Now, Bunny's not being too active, so let's see if we can go find another uh, patient here in our hospital that maybe has a little bit more action this morning. All right, here we go. Tyler clearly wants to say hello to you guys. Now you saw the loggerhead. This is a different species that we have here in Florida. This is the green sea turtle, and this is just a juvenile. They actually get much, much bigger than this. Tyler will most likely grow up to be even bigger than Brody. The green sea turtle gets bigger than the loggerhead sea turtles. Now Tyler is in here for uh, an injury that is more natural. We see natural and human impact injuries in our hospital. Tyler is in here for a shark bite. Yes, we do see quite a bit of predator interactions in our hospital. Sharks are natural predators out there in the ocean to sea turtles, but sometimes they do escape. Something uh, a turtle like Tyler, a small little juvenile, is actually pretty quick underwater. They can outrun a shark, which is probably how Tyler was lucky enough to get away. So Tyler's a little wiggly this morning, but if uh, Tyler would sit still, you'd see on the carapace, there is some scraping from the teeth marks of that shark. And that's what Tyler's being treated for. Nothing too serious, luckily for Tyler. We do see more serious shark bites uh, to our hospital every once in a while, but Tyler's doing very well. 
Tyler does have uh, some internal infections going on because of that shark bite. So that's what Tyler's still being treated for. <laughs> They're all very hungry this morning, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, let's keep moving. You have some questions? While you're walking, you Lindsay, um, another question is talking about all the different tanks. Do they ever change tanks? Do they ever have more than one in a tank? Like, talk yeah. about the tanks and like, what happens, like, if you have too many turtles and you don't have enough tanks? What, what do you just do with that? Great question. So we like to give them each their own tank. Again, it's kind of like a hospital room. We like to keep them separated out there in the wild. Turtles are mainly solitary. They don't normally with each other, uh, unless mating or in the same ground. But I'll give you an example. This tank over here has AJ and Burton Jr., who are actually two shark bite victims that we have in the hospital. They're just like Tyler. They're both juvenile turtles. You'll see they're actually in the same tank together. But we have a separator. We have this little uh, fencing that's in between them so that they interact with each other. We can do that out of our tanks. We have it down there too. And some of the larger tanks, if we need, we can put um, some fencing in as well to divide them off so that we can put multiple. But sometimes we do hit capacity. Luckily for us, there are a couple other uh, places in the area that will take in sea turtles. Um, and sort of help us rehab them. But we have had to put tanks in our parking lot before as well, our staff parking lot uh, when we get a room. So we, we need to, and again, the patients we need. <laughs> Great question. I'm kind of bouncing around, but I wanted to go to a specific patient. So you just saw Tyler, which was a juvenile green turtle. This is sort of the next size class up. Let's see if I can get Topsy on camera. Hello, Topsy. Topsy is a subadult sea turtle. So same species as Tyler, you'll see how big they get. And this is just a subadult yet. Sea turtles, uh, everyone always asks us, what's the age of our sea turtles? Well, we can't tell. There's no good way to age turtle. Maybe you've seen Finding Nemo and I think Crush was 250 years and counting. <laughs> uh, it's actually not true. We don't know how old these sea turtles are. We estimate that they live between 80 and 100 years, similar to humans. But what we can do is put them into size classes. So what that means is by how big we can determine whether they are uh, hatchlings, juveniles, or adults. There's four size classes that we to. Now, while I'm coming around, I want to look at that carapace, that shell. Do you see two uh, deep in that shell? Let's see if Topsy will come back around. There's two deep in that back shell. A boat strike. This is another boat strike injury that we have. See those two deep cuts in the back? That's from the propeller of a boat. And unfortunately, Topsy has some buoyancy problems. So Topsy does float up at the top of the tank because of that injured boat strike. But bottom end of Topsy, you'll see that little sort of backpack, that little white tape on the back of the carapace. Really a dive weight. It's only about seven ounces. It's really, really light but it is heavy enough to balance out Topsy's body. You'll see Topsy's pretty happy. Topsy can swim around like a normal sea turtle and not float at the top of the tank. But it's light enough that it can still come up to the surface and breathe, which is obviously very important. So during Topsy, we are a team. We have two vets on staff here, Dr. Charlie and Dr. Max are monitoring Topsy to try to figure out what's the best way to treat Topsy and how uh, we can be able to raise Topsy in a way to balance out that body without having that dive weight on. <laughs> Hello, Topsy. <laughs> I 
All right, I'm gonna move on to another patient. John, if you have questions for me. Um, I think you answered quite a bit of them. Um, do we know how long, how, well, first of all, how old turtles actually can get to? You talked about their ages, but um, do we know about how long they live? Yeah, great question. So we <laughs> estimate that they can get between 80 and 100 years old. So similar to humans. Wow, okay. And um, about how long do they stay with you guys? Because um, what I shared in the chat is that the whole purpose of you guys is to um, get the turtles better because we want you guys to actually release them back into the wild. So right. about how long do they stay with you? Of course, yes. Yeah. So we're just a hospital. We do not have any permanent residents here. So we don't keep any sea turtles forever. Uh, we're just a hospital. We are just a short stop for them, a doctor's visit. On average, our sea turtles will be here about four to six months, but uh, it can range. Topsy here has actually almost been here a year and a half, if not a little bit longer. Topsy had uh, extensive injuries that have taken a little bit longer to heal. And we've had some patients that come in and uh, they have injuries or illnesses that are really quick to treat. Uh, we've had patients come in for just a few hours and then we've been able to release them. So it really varies depending on what's wrong with them um, and how uh, you know extensive the injuries or the illnesses, how long it takes to treat them. And all sea turtles are different just like humans. So some of them might respond to treatment faster than others will. Gotcha. And um, I know that when we talk to the Manatee uh, Lagoon, um, Manatees are obviously protected species. Um, so a great question Brianna just asked is, do, um, maybe it's not Brianna, there's a different picture, but I don't know. Uh, but if, if the turtle gets injured, if someone uh, hits them with a boat, um, do, do they get a fine or no? Great, great question. I've actually never had that question before. So great thinking. So all seven species of sea turtles are either threatened or endangered globally around the world um, in conservation status. So their populations are getting pretty close to extinction. They are all protected. However, uh, it's pretty difficult to track down who has hit the sea turtle and on their boat. And most of the time it's accidental, right? So if you've ever been boating before, Sorry about the noise, guys. We have some construction going on. <laughs> if you've ever been on a boat before, it's actually pretty difficult to look down into the water to see uh, maybe a sea turtle or a dolphin or something that's up near the surface, unless you really know what you're doing. So it's pretty hard to track down every individual that's ever hit a sea turtle. Uh, however, if uh, you are caught maybe harassing or bothering a sea turtle, then you can be highly fined, yes. Awesome, thank you. Okay, go ahead, keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep getting these questions. All right, awesome. Seen the loggerhead. We have a green sea turtle. I told you we have one more species in our hospital. This is intrepid. Intrepid is a Kinks Ridley turtle. So the third species we talk about today. Now, Kemp's Ridleys are really special because they are the rarest. We're just talking about conservation stuff. The Kemp's Ridley is critically, they're the rarest found around the world. And they are also the smallest species of So Intrepid is uh, actually a sub-adult. So um, reference uh, about Topsy's age, but much smaller than Topsy. And Intrepid, in for a story to Brody, some entanglement problems in monofish fishing line. Intrepid, when Intrepid came in, that fishing line was wrapped around the flipper. So uh, if we can get a good view, you'll see sort of uh, it, what looks like a necklace neck of Intrepid. It's actually the scar on a filament, that fishing line. But Intrepid's doing better when Intrepid first came able to cut off all of that monofilament, untangle Intrepid, and now Intrepid just being treated for that injury. 
<laughs> now I'm sure you're wondering what in the world is this piping that we have uh, in the tank behind Intrepid. So that's what we call an enrichment device, that big pipe right there. They come in different forms. You'll see them a lot at uh, different zoos and aquaria. What they are are uh, kind of like a toy for our sea turtle. Stimulate them mentally and physically. Sometimes Intrepid will head right into that pipe or bite on it, maybe scratch its back on that pipe. It just stimulates them. They can play with it. I'm going while they're here in the tank. It's sort of a healing process. Now, what is all that green stuff growing on us and the head of Intrepid? That's algae. It is a natural part of our oceans. These are saltwater tanks, of course. Our sea turtles live in saltwater. Put them in saltwater tanks. And that algae just back naturally. It happens out there in the wild. Well, hello. <laughs> That's a good view for you guys of Intrepid. <laughs> But our sea turtles, again, spend most of their time out here in their tanks, but they do get to go into our indoor hospital uh, about once a week, if not more, in order to get whatever treat they need. And when they're in the hospital, we will scrub off that out, sort of clean them up a little while they're here. Now, some of the treatments we can do right in the tank, but we drain the tanks first. The sea turtles are, are pretty quick, so uh, we don't want to get in there in the water with them. Go ahead, John. You have some questions? Yeah, I just have a yeah. couple here. Um, Harper was asking what the oldest turtle is that you guys have there at, um, at your site right now. All right. Good question. So the oldest would be Brody, that first one that we met. Okay. And uh, that's because Brody is the adult. It's actually the only adult sea turtle we have here in our hospital. So how old is Brody? I'm not sure. However, we know they become adults at about 20 to 25 years old. So Brody is at least about 20 to 25 years old. Okay. And um, the little tube that you had in the other, um, in the other tank, is yep. the students are asking, is that designed for the turtle to get to go through them? Um, they want to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, great question. So they do come in different shapes and sizes. So this one uh, was sort of special for Intrepid. The Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle doesn't like too much human interaction around the tank. It sort of spooks them a little bit. So Intrepid uh, can't swim through it because we don't want Intrepid to get stuck in the middle. So it's small enough that Intrepid can't swim through it but it's big enough that Intrepid could kind of uh, stick its head right there in that little hole and sort of mm. feel protected, feel like it's in a little a little space. Awesome. Some yeah, and there's, yeah. go ahead. Uh, sometimes for our smaller patients like Tyler that you guys saw, we will have ones uh, big enough that they can swim through it. Great okay. Question. Yeah, so, you know, we have a couple of kids asking about, you know, them playing and having more room to swim and, I think it's important for the students to understand this is just like a hospital for humans. So exactly. just like yeah. a human, you really don't have a lot of room. If you've ever been to a hospital room, there's not much room to move around and you don't really want to move around because you're not feeling good. Um, exactly. So let's go back to Bunny really quick. Remember Bunny in the beginning. See how Bunny is really just hanging out on the bottom? This is normally what our sea turtle patients do. When they come in, they are really injured or really, really sick. They do not have a lot of energy. A lot of them don't even have enough energy to swim up to the surface. So for some of them, we uh, don't even put this much water in. We have to put just a little bit of water so that all of their energy uh, they use, they just have to kind of pop up their head to breathe. They are really, mm. really sick and injured, so they don't need a lot of space. And again, just like you said, we're not an aquarium. These are not permanent animals that we have here. They're only going to be here for a short amount of time. Now, the ones that I've shown you, like uh, Brody, Intrepid, Topsy, they're pretty active this morning. But these patients have also been here for a while now. They're very far through their treatment plan. When they first came in, they were not this active. This is sort of what a sea turtle likes uh, pretty close to its release. Gotcha. And so we know that um, the goal, again, is to get these patients to be released back into the ocean 
um, you know, once they have been rehabilitated. So um, the question is, is obviously we don't know how long or how often you release them, but um, do you let people come and see them get released? Do you have any releases happening soon? Yeah, great question. We do have public releases. So here in uh, Juno Beach, right across the street over there is actually the actual Juno Beach, the beach on the Atlantic Ocean, which is convenient for us because we will take our sea turtles down in a trailer or sometimes on a little gurney, a little hospital bed and wheel them down to the beach in order to release them publicly. Now, normally it's the loggerhead sea turtles like Brody that will be released publicly here on our beach. They have a large population here in Juno Beach, so we can release them right here. But some of the other species like the Kemp's Ridley, we will take uh, to different parts of Florida in order to release them. Uh, the parts of Florida where they, we know that they have a, a larger population, a larger feeding ground to get them right out to their habitat. But if you check our website, it's a marinelife.org. We will post on our website when we are going to have a release. Normally we have about a week's notice of when we will have a public release. And if you can't come to one of our public releases, we always live stream them on Facebook and Instagram. So be sure to check out our Facebook and Instagram as well. That's awesome. And so, you know, obviously the whole world has changed over the past few months, but still there are people, there are still injured turtles. So um, during COVID-19, I'm sure that you guys have still been working daily. Um, have you guys been releasing at all or, or no during this time? You don't want any public releases right now. Yeah, great question. So of course, for an active sea turtle hospital, we can't stop our job. We are considered essential, uh, but we do have protocols. You'll see I'm actually the only one out here uh, in our outdoor hospital right now. Uh, we are open to the public, but we do have different social distancing protocols that we are following. Uh, but while we were closed to the public, which was uh, for uh, over a month, about a month and a half, uh, a little bit longer than that, uh, we continue to do what we do. So yes, we treated all of our patients. We were here every day. We did have some releases. They were not open to the public. However, they were broadcasted on our Facebook Live. So again, if you go to our Facebook, uh, you can go back and see those live releases that we had. I think we released about four, maybe five sea turtles in that time. Wow. Awesome. And I know we talked when we did our preview together to, to test drive this. Um, and we are, the, some of the students did want to see like the, the area where they actually take care of the turtles. I didn't know if we were going to get to that part. I know you said that was closer to the end, um, yeah. like the, the hospital area inside. Yeah, this is a good time actually. I'll pop you guys through the window. So our sea turtles are about to get fed. So it's kind of time that we say bye to them out mm -hmm. there. <laughs> Dr. Max is doing his morning rounds to go to take a look at all of our sea turtles. But quickly, I'll pop you in to our indoor hospital. This is what our indoor hospital looks like. We do have our own x-ray machine, which is pretty rare. A lot of places don't have it. Uh, and we are expanding right now. That's what our, all that noise is in the background. We're having an expansion on our building. And we will have a, a larger hospital with that as well. We will have our own CT machine, which is important too. We do have a patient in here. We have a patient Galapagos, an adult uh, green sea turtle that needed to be uh, what we call dry docked overnight. Sea turtles can be out of water for uh, an extensive period of time. They just won't eat while, in, while out of the water. And then we do have a surgical suite back here as well. We can do all of our own surgeries in house. And we have a, a tank in here if we need to keep a patient in water overnight. We have a pharmacy and a blood lab. So we can really do a lot of our own treatments in-house, which is really important. It allows us to do our job uh, more efficient and faster. Awesome. So um, obviously part of this is doing a virtual tour, but we can also talk a little bit about careers here as well. I shared in the chat that if anyone that likes water and, and animals, uh, any kind of marine biology would be a great field to go into to take care of animals. 
Um, and there are lots of places where people can do that. Um, the question is, uh, what kind of background do you have to do this? What do you actually do here? Again, share with the people. Um, and what other kind of jobs are available at, at, at the center to, for kids that may be interested? Sure, great question. Uh, well, everyone who works here in our building is a biologist. So I work in the education department. So I work with school groups uh, and different community groups to educate them about our sea turtles, kind of like what we did today. But I'm a biologist. My background uh, is in uh, marine biology, fisheries, and aquatic sciences. Uh, so uh, I study a lot about marine fish. I went to uh, college. I got an undergraduate degree and a graduate degree. I went to grad school, which a lot of our employees did. Uh, but it depends on uh, what department or what focus you want to have. Again, I'm education. We have a research department. They focus mainly on nesting sea turtles. They all have a uh, background in biology. They're all biologists as well. We have a conservation department. Uh, they focus on ocean conservation, different initiatives to help our sea turtles, like focusing on those uh, entanglements and uh, recycling and ocean pollution, those sort of things. And they're all biologists as well. And then our hospital, our rehab department, we do have two veterinarians on staff. If you wanna be a sea turtle veterinarian, uh, you not only have to go to veterinary school after college, but you do have to specialize in sea turtles. So it's a lot of training, uh, but after all that training, that's why they're as good as they are here in the hospital. They have a lot of training in uh, sea turtles and doing what they do. But we also have vet technicians on staff. We have three awesome technicians uh, and they did have to go to vet school but they did have to get a certification in veterinary uh, training as well but again without that certification they're all biologists too so for the most part we are all just uh, biologists with different focuses in different areas very cool um, and one last question before Rebecca comes back up um, there are some questions about nesting season um, do you have any idea when that is and do you guys do anything with that of course, I know, and of course, we do it here. <laughs> so mm -hmm. our beach, uh, in Juno Beach here is one of the most densely nested sea turtle beaches in the entire world. I'm going to bring you up to uh, this nest count. So our research department focuses on sea turtle nesting. I told you earlier we had uh, three. We have three species that nest here on our beach. Our research department. Uh, studies 9.5 miles of beach. So not a very long stretch of beach. However, last year we were two nests away from 21,000 nests on our beach. So we have a lot of sea turtle nests. Again, we are one of the most densely nested beaches in the entire world on uh, sort of a little average is during peak nesting season, which I'll tell you when that is in just a minute during peak nesting season, uh, you can't walk two to three feet on our beach without stepping over a sea turtle nest. So that's really important uh, why we're here, why we're located where we are so that we can really focus on getting the word out, educating the public so that they know uh, how to handle the sea turtles, the nests, how to uh, avoid them and protect them as much as possible. possible. Now here in South Florida, sea turtle nesting season begins on March 1st and it goes through October 31st. And peak season is about July. So we're almost coming up to peak season, but you'll see so far, we're already over 3000 nests total. The first ones to start off are the leatherbacks. Those are the, the biggest species of sea turtle in the world. So we're very fortunate to have them nesting here on our beach. And then uh, the number one that we have are the loggerheads. Again, why we're named after them, the number one species we see here on our beaches and in our hospital. And then the green sea turtles just started nesting on May 18th and we're already up to 34. So they're starting to come up. Those big mamas are coming up to lay their nests. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, I think now we're gonna bring Rebecca back up and uh, just kind of wrap up and then give you the last word if that's okay. Awesome, that sounds great. Awesome, okay, go ahead, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Lindsay. That was just awesome. Um, I know my family enjoys visiting Loggerhead Marine Life. 
but to have that personal tour that you just gave us was just amazing. Thank you so much. Awesome. And Thank you for having me. Yeah. So for our students out there, um, we would love to hear what you thought about um, the tour of Loggerhead Marine Life Center. And you can share your thoughts pretty easily. You can, if you have a smartphone, you can scan that QR code that's on the screen right now, or you can go to bit.ly slash VLE 013, that is case sensitive. So if you um, didn't catch it right here, you can always um, come back for the replay, but we would love to hear what, um, what you think about the loggerhead turtles, about the, um, the hospital, about how they are working to save these magnificent creatures. Um, we just wanna hear from you. So please share your thoughts and we will um, in turn give that back to Loggerhead Marina so they will um, have record of, uh, of what you were thinking about this experience. Um, we also have for our teachers some additional uh, supplemental um, resources, uh, of course, the website, but then there's also a, a New Zella article regarding um, the sea turtles that are nesting on our state beaches. So Lindsay briefly talked about the nesting and you can learn a little bit more by reading that New Zella article. We also have a few other experiences today at 10 o'clock. We have a local Holocaust survivor, Norman Frijam will be with us and then at lunchtime around 12, we have Peter and Paul Reynolds, author and illustrator of the book, The North Star. So we're going to get a live reading of that, um, that story book. So we hope you join us today. Um, I want to thank one more time, Lindsay from Loggerhead Marine Life Center for giving us such a wonderful experience today. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. You guys have a